Why you must say no and how do you say it? Almost everyone who has miserably failed is started with let me just try it. Let me give it a shot. Let me have a look at it. But hang on. Yes, the same is true for those who have been immensely successful as well. They started. The breakthrough idea for this week is that it's not how small or how slow the start is, but how dangerous or successful the chosen route is. While we are at it, we will also discuss how to say no to people, ideas or events. We will share a simple but profound insight into what the saying yes implicitly implies and we can't wait to share our breakthrough metaphor around quicksand. I think it's a no-brainer that if you don't start your week or day with a plan, you're most likely going to end up doing things that are not the most important ones. It really depends on who influences your choices around what you spend your time on, but in general without a plan beforehand, one is most likely to not use time most wisely. For those of you who do start with a plan, here's a very important breakthrough idea. Once you have a plan, every yes to someone or some other action is an implicit no to someone else or something else. Remember, in the moments of your decision, your destiny is shaped. And this is a key breakthrough concept from Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <laughs> Indeed, we guided him to the way. Whether he be grateful or he be ungrateful. Right? So there's a choice that we are always making. The choices are around how do we want to be, who do we want to be, what do we want to see, hear, say, do, etc. What do we spend our time on is a very key thing to be aware of. The more aware we are, the more conscious our choices will be. If you really want to take the challenge, try out something called time logging. This is the idea or habit of logging time on different activities throughout the day and throughout the week. An app that is pretty good for this is Toggle, T-O-G-G-L. Type it out and check it out. So there are many times where we have to say no, either to certain people, certain activities, certain tasks, reading or watching certain content, or just saying no to spending more time on social media. We don't do it because we fear we may miss out on some important things or some important news or some key information. That's a very common excuse. But it is very detrimental to your success. You're much more likely to succeed if you don't waste your time on unplanned things. If you know certain meetings, events or gatherings do not meet your needs, are not good for your mindset and after effects are very dangerous, avoid them. Likewise, you may have to cut down certain relationships, certain friendships, etc. Note, we are not saying to turn and turn down all the relationships and friendships. You have to choose wisely. Some people you may owe to, like your parents, your relatives, right? There's a big responsibility towards them. So your decision making around them will be different from what your decision making process will be for friends and colleagues. Questions that you want to ask are what are the pros and cons of maintaining this relationship? How much contact do I want to be in? How much time do I want to spend with them or on a certain activity? And how to gradually withdraw? When you say no, you actually enable yourself to say yes to more important people and more important activities. But now, how do you actually say no? That's a big question that many have. So here are a few tips around saying no. Number one, saying no does not have to be rude. Thank the person for the idea, for the offer, for the opportunity, but clearly say no. And that is our second point, how to say it clearly. If you're not clear and you're beating around the bush, it will be hard to get out. The person will try to change your mind. They may try to take you to a guilt trip and so on and so forth. The quicksand metaphor that we'll be sharing at the end of the episode also applies in this scenario. So be clear. I'm sorry, I can't do it. I'm sorry I won't be able to attend, so on and so forth. Number three, be careful. Do not give an excuse or explanation all the time. It depends on your relationship, 
as well as on the receiving person if you should give an explanation or not. Some people will try to negotiate the explanation or to weigh the explanation and maybe put you on a guilt trip that, hey, this is something that's more important to you than my offer, and so on and so forth. So at certain times, you would give an explanation, but most of the time, you don't need to. If you find it hard to do it in person or face-to-face, -face, ask for some time to think about it and then reply via text or email say that you won't be able to do it, but you thank them for the offer. Finally, consider giving a counter offer. So if you can't attend an event being hosted by a friend, you could offer to catch up on coffee or lunch later the same day or at a different time during the week. If you can't attend an in-person meeting, you can offer to have a phone call for a specific amount of time. Remember, getting rid of stuff and commitments is very important for your own growth. It's like pruning all dead branches from a tree. So at times you have to let go, at times you have to reduce, at times you have to elevate yourself and elevate the others to be able to delegate the task that you are best at. So now you can free up time for doing things that you want to do or you want to grow into doing. Continuing on our discussion in a spiritual breakthrough session, last week we discussed how the evil forces of shaitan plans and strategizes on capturing the human heart by increasing the desire, by making false promises, and by capturing different faculties of a human being, eventually getting the heart as a captive. Ibn al-Qayyum rahimahullah mentions in his book, The Disease and the Cure, and he continues to des describe the scenario, the strategy of the enemy, and this time we'll be discussing on how he uses the eyesight, the eyes of a believer. So the idea is to realize that the eyesight and the seeing is a key thing. Shaitan and his allies incites and allures the human being into seeing things that are forbidden. The more they see them, the more they desire them, the more false promises are made, the desires are increased, and the actions are then taken. So instead of using the eyesight for reading or watching or seeing beneficial things to reflect upon and to learn from, the person invests time and energy and effort in watching and seeing things that are forbidden by the Lord of the universe. And when he does that, the Satan gives him the excuse and makes it beautified to him that at the end of the day, you are just seeing the beauty created by the God himself. So by seeing the beauty, you are actually praising the God. So these type of false reasoning, although may convince a person with lack of knowledge or a strong amount of desires, are obviously false and untrue. If he fails to do that, then he would try to take it to the next level and try to bring in the idea that of a unification of the creator and the creation, that everything is a reflection of God and there's God in everything. So he comes and takes one from a true understanding of monotheism to a false understanding of unification of creation and the creator. Likewise, he will take capture of the hearing and will make him hear things that are false promises, falsehood, desires, and vain desires and take him away from listening to beneficial things and if the word of Allah or his messenger peace be upon him reaches the ears then he tries to bring in confusing thoughts false interpretations and so on and so forth the idea is that these two faculties are very important as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍّ عَدُوًّا مِّنَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ وَكَفَى بِرَبِّكَ هَادِيًا وَنَصِيرًا And thus we have made for every prophet an enemy from among the criminals. But sufficient is your Lord as a guide and as a helper. The lesson here is to be aware of how open one becomes to trials, how much risk we are putting ourselves into once we start following the footsteps of shaitan, how many have started their journey of addiction to smoking or drugs by just trying it once, how many have started their journey of addiction to porn by just checking it out once. The key takeaway here is that once you start to come out of it is not trivial. So if at this point in your life you're being lured into a territory, a type of sin that is itself forbidden or is known to be leading to forbidden areas, just stay away from it. Don't even try it. 
as if you try it, you're putting yourself into huge risk. And if you're already into it, the longer you stay and the longer you keep saying to yourself, let me just do it one last time, it will become harder and harder to come out. It's like someone standing at the edge of quicksand and considering to try it out. He steps in very carefully. Now, it depends on the strength of the person himself, external security surrounding him, and the type of quicksand itself. This would determine how quickly he can step out or how deep would he sink in or how long would he remain stuck in it. You're not obviously saying that quicksand can drown you to death, but it does limit you. It does captures you and makes it easy for the enemy to completely take over you. At the very least, it takes away time, energy, effort, and focus from you that could have been spent doing all other great things. So if you're already in some kind of a bad habit, think of it like being in a quicksand. The quicker you come out, the safer you will be. The longer you stay, the more energy you lose, and the less likely it becomes for you to come out, especially if the forces of shaitan and your desires and your heedlessness lets you be completely taken over. How many youth have missed out on prime time to unleash their potential by being sunk in emotional drama by approaching opposite gender in an inappropriate manner, causing them emotional hurt? How many of them are currently contemplating taking this route but without focusing on developing their own intellectual capital, self-awareness, and emotional mastery? At the core of this all, as the breakthrough comes when a person realizes his or his or her own relation with the Creator and understand what is in the power of the Creator and what is in his or her own power, and to realize that the ultimate power and control belongs to Allah, and to realize the worth and the completion of human knowledge combined versus the perfection and completeness of the wisdom and knowledge of the Creator. Action items from this episode are who or what needs to be said more no to. What is your action plan around saying no in the upcoming week? If you're thinking about doing an activity that you want to do just one time or just one last time and you know you should not be doing it, then don't do it. We have talked about the importance of keeping an eye on the dashboard by looking at your daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly progress by doing check-in meetings and accountability meetings with yourself or an accountability partner or a coach. So, what will you add from this episode into your check in meetings?